Welcome, traveler, to Folk Recovery, I, and here is I's story. What up? I'm I, that's A-H-I in all capitals, and I'm a songwriter and singer based out of Canada. I am folk because I make music for real people. I found folk through, I would say, first and foremost, Bob Marley, right? And it's funny because a lot of people wouldn't consider Bob Marley folk music, but to me, that is like quintessential folk music. The song like Redemption Song or Time Will Tell or No Woman No Cry, those to me, that's classic folk music. And I would say Bob Marley and just the just the reggae tradition in a lot of ways have, have a lot of songs that echo and mirror that folk sentiment, music that is for real people, music that is for grassroots people. And as I dive into music more, you know, then you could say people like Tracy Chapman was an artist that really showed you, showed Black musicians what they can do with an acoustic guitar. Like she told this whole story of this whole life and this whole universe almost with this song, Fast Car, like, you know, you go to Fast Car. But, I, you know, then you could go on to even hip hop, to be honest, like, I loved all kinds of hip hop growing up, but certain artists like Most Def, Chaos, Common Sense, that, you know, they call it the raucous era of hip hop. There's a lot of, <laughs> how do I say it? Like they call it backpack music or commercial, or, or sorry, not conscious hip hop, but it was just more organic than what was in the mainstream. It was less processed, more authentic, if you will. And that kind of stuff just kind of introduced me to singing even in a way that I never thought like a young black teen could do like most Def was singing on so much music and he had songs where he was just singing no rapping just singing and with a guitar with a live band so folk came to me like I, I don't like there's been this like for a long time and I know it's changing now this this idea of what folk is and how you can discover folk and who you know the the Woody Guthrie's and the um Pete Seeger's and you know Joni Mitchell's and that's that stuff's great I love it but what if you're not American? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, does folk music stop? Like, it, it, you know what I mean? And then what happened? What, did folk, folk music not exist before 1776? Like, you know what I mean? Like, was there like, so there's, there's folk music from every tradition. And, and, and I understand that there's a thing, you know, that's in North America that makes folk music what it is when we submit it for Grammys and for Junos and all this stuff. But at the end of the day, where are the people and i always look for music in that sense so that that's why i said bob marley first you know um tracy Chat. there's so many lauren hill even like people don't think lauren hill has folk music but that whole mtv unplugged that's a folk record you know what i mean um man there's so many but but i think to just bring a full circle bob marley and redemption song was just like if i had to pick one folk song to be the folk song of all folk songs for me personally it would be redemption song like that's black folk music that's like if you are a black person born in the americas from the diaspora or parents who who came through the transatlantic slave trade um that's our story that's our folk music like that song is our folk music whether you listen to reggae music or not so yeah folk found me <laughs> At folk, like during the Folk Music Ontario days when I started volunteering there. So prior to, prior to Folk Music Ontario, I didn't know where to put myself. Like I was, I, I was literally trying to create a genre for myself for the longest while, like black, black folk soul or like folk rock soul or like indie folk soul, like, you know what I mean? Um, and I was just, you just, you, you just, come, I, remember, I, remember, I can't remember what the actual, there was a term that me and a friend of mine had for our type of music and it was like, folk roots soul or something it's something something like that black folk soul or i can't i can't remember but you you're trying to define yourself because ultimately like just being a black artist in in north america with an acoustic guitar you're, you're not just drawing from one sound like i grew up in a west indian household listen to hip-hop listen to rock listen to like everything and then i but i love acoustic music right so i think when i say folk found me at folk music ontario is when i first went into that community that was the first community I would say that allowed me to really just be myself, right? And to really just express my music the way I wanted to without even thinking about 
what the label was or how it was be perceived or who would, you know, what what industry people would have to say about it. So that community allowed me to flourish and just like really embrace my acoustic guitar and really embrace my voice as a singer songwriter, um, as a songwriter. And then it just kind of kept growing and growing from there. Like even, so we talk about folk music seemingly like a very American thing, but then like some of my favorite folk music comes from England. You know what I mean? Like Ben Howard is one of my favorite artists. Michael Kuanuka is one of my favorite artists. I spent about half a year living in England with my wife and daughter. And we were going to open mic nights and like just playing music with British people making folk music, you know what I mean? And it was just like some of the greatest stuff you've ever heard. It was, it was, it was amazing. So, you know, folk music on terror really kind of let me be myself. And then when I, when I found myself, I kind of like started going to places, England, we spent some time there, like I was saying, and then we went to Nashville where I started leaning more into the Americana space a little bit. Um, but at the essence, I, I will always be rooted in folk music. I think folk is a better descriptor, um, contemporary folk, whatever you want to say, right? Whatever sells, whatever box you can put it on, it doesn't matter to me. But but folk is about the people. And I think where, where I found uh, tribes and people for myself was folk music Ontario and then in England and then in Nashville. So I see folk recovery here as allowing the genre to grow. Right. And this could be specific to Canada. It could be specific to the American market. Um, I'm going to say this artist There's an artist named Steven Sanchez, right, made a phenomenal record. And you can you could fact check this, but I don't think he was nominated for any awards this year. He has one of the biggest songs. He probably has the single handedly biggest song in folk music. And then there's this stigma in folk music that if something crosses a threshold of success, that it can no longer be a part of the folk community. Or if something is too polished, it can no longer be a part of the folk community. And I have a huge problem with that, right? It's not to say, and I shouldn't be saying names, but there's another artist who also gets the same, who, who's doing very successful. And I'm not going to say this artist because I'm going to say something that could seem negative, right? Um, American artist, very popular. If I said the name, you know who it was. And I was listening to this record. I was like, how is this artist also not considered for any awards this year? Because like the first three songs of the album are very, not even nominated in, in any categories. And the first three artists, the first few songs on this artist record were all very folky, right? And you know this artist gets support. They have a lot of fans, a lot of audience. But then as you go on to the album a little bit more, and I found myself kind of like saying, I want to talk to the community about this, saying like, why wouldn't this artist be considered for this? You know, because I've had conversations in the industry about this specific artist. And as you listen to more of the album, you can see that the, the first few songs are folk songs. And then you go in and then it gets more pop, like extremely, like where it's like, it's not folk anymore. Like you can tell that it's just, straight up pop music. And there's a line that you cross sometimes where folk is no longer folk anymore. And like, you know what I mean? Like it becomes like, like if I'm sure if you took a Cardi B song and played it on an acoustic guitar, you can make it sound folk. But once you get started, sorry, Cardi B, we're not we weren't talking about you. But, um, once you cross a certain place, it's no longer that anymore, right? Like, so this artist was, was d diving into the, the pop realm and I could see why some people may feel like, okay, well, they're only making folk music so that they can be considered in folk categories or so that they can be seen as some, like, like they're trying to tap into that market, but they're not true folk artists. But for artists like Steven Sanchez, his album is just folk through and through, you know what I mean? And, and some of the people that were nominated have had a legacy of folk, but the albums they submitted were not completely folk albums. You, you follow where I'm going with this? And I think, and I know this may sound like out there, but I think the concern I had was that he wasn't considered because there's this like idea that, and I've, I've mentioned Woody Guthrie, there's no no shame in Woody Guthrie's music. I think it's great. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like that tradition is great, but if it's not like embedded in that tradition, 
they can't consider it. If it's tapping too much into modernized music, we can't consider it as a part of this community. And I think that stifles folk music. I think it's why mainstream pop music dominates everything because like sometimes it sounds better like it just sonically sounds better so but if we have to re relegate folk to this organic lower level music then it, it it doesn't allow us to like look at luminaires right great example of hey ho ho hey ho hey ho or ho hey i always forget i think it's ho ho hey that song was like produced well very catchy melody and it just blew up you know what i mean and they've had a great fan base they've had a great audience and great career since that song came out and i think that stuff is good for folk music it's not like selling out it's just it's just broadening the, the reach you know what i mean i would love to hear folk music on the top 10 billboard charts you know what i mean not because i care about billboard but because it's great music and it's like it should be everywhere you know what i mean um if a song like redemption song came out today as as many people have covered it as as iconic as that song is we wouldn't even know it existed <laughs> you know what i mean like i don't know, maybe maybe like if if he had the right like situation label situation or marketing situation but there's a chance that that song would completely go into the radar do you know what i mean um it's a weird it's a weird industry and i think that we just kind of have to like Folk is supposed to be freer than all the other genres in a way, but yet we have these, these, these invisible lines that confine us to what folk is and what it's supposed to mean and how far it can reach and how polished it can be. And I just feel like it can be all of that. You know what I mean? It can be the most polished folk record in the world with the, the highest gear in the, on the planet, the most expensive gear on the planet. Or it could be done with one guitar and a and a you know like a condenser mic in a barn. Like you know what I mean? It doesn't like we don't all have to be using reel to reel tapes to make a record. Like you know, I just just have the whole gamut. Let it all let it all shine. My final share with you, traveler, is be honest. Whatever you do in life, just have honesty, integrity, and just express yourself honestly. Um, I feel like honesty can get you through a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> and if you're honest, people will connect to that. People will relate to that. Um, and with honesty comes responsibilities as well. You know what I mean? So be compassionate as well. So honesty and compassionate will get you. And you can't be compassionate without being honest. You know what I mean? I don't think there's a way to be compassionate without seeing people in honesty, approaching people with honesty. So but yeah, be honest, as honest as you can and be scarily honest with yourself first and foremost thank you traveler for joining us on this folk recovery oral history production created by guest storytellers with contributions from gaytree killings asl performer and advisor joni narita folk community advisor and sound producer karen young technical producer stephanie williams assistant producer Alyssa Matthews, Station Manager at CJRU 1280 AM. Allison Skirm, Special Collections and Liaison Librarian at Toronto Metropolitan University Libraries. Heather Hewitt, Folk Recovery Logo Designer, as well as Senior Artwork Specialist and Yogi. And special thanks to our friends, family, and community supporters, and to our funder, the Ontario Arts Council. I am Kijo Buchanan, narrator and executive producer. Ashay.